Hello, everybody, and welcome to Zelda Universe TV. And you are watching Realms of the Wild, our Zelda RPG show now with an updated <laughs> and sleeker new look. I am not the normal Game Master. I am a guest Game Master and normal cast member, Elias Thompson. Um, our normal Game Master, Trainer Jody, was not feeling well this week, and so we put together a one-shot for you all instead. We hope you enjoy it. It is my first time Game Mastering ever. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. This is fine. Uh, we have a few That's announcements. That's literally to get what through. he's been doing the entire week. I just want to let you know. <laughs> uh, we have a few announcements to get through before we get started. Um, and they are, well, I already mentioned one, that a new, the new layouts are here. Um, we've rolled out our new layouts channel-wide now, so everybody has them, including Realms of the Wild. Although I will say, in Realms of the Wild's uh, case, uh, a couple things are still beta. Um, the Realms layouts are kind of involved, and so uh, expect some improvements to come along with this layout over time as well, but you can sort of get the gist of it. Um, generally speaking, though, the new layout features include a larger game area, improved chat, most recent follower, subscriber, and cheer being displayed, and displaying our sub goal of 20 subs. What happens when we reach 20 subs? You'll find out when we reach it, because I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Everyone sub right now. <laughs> we really the by game. the way, you guys. <laughs> Give me more things to stress out about. <laughs> um, while Alex is dying, their next announcement is that we're coming to PAX East. Speaking yeah! of Alex. I'm going to PAX um, East. Alex will be there with some other Zelda Universe folks, and he'll be uh, hosting and moderating the panel over there, which is Breath of the Wild and the Future of the Zelda series. We've done it at a few other conventions this year so far, so look forward to it at PAX East if you're gonna be there. More details such as exact time and place, TBD. Get hyped. I am so very, very hyped. Twitch, you've heard of Twitch, has launched. Oh, no, what? explain to me. What is Twitch? What, what is this thing? <laughs> Well, Twitch is a online video. Okay. Twitch has <laughs> launched Clip Champs, which is the new feature um, that's sort of uh, meant to encourage clipping. Basically, what it is is viewers who create clips for a specific channel, aka this one, uh, across four distinct weeks and have over 50 combined views on those clips will receive the exclusive Clip Champ chat badge. I don't want to say that again. That is a tongue twister. Um, so if you if you make a lot of clips for the channel and they get enough views, you get a special little badge. It looks like one of those. And you know what? I've done film before, but I can never remember the name of like the clacker things. The film uh, slate. That. Film slate. Yep, that's right. It's like You're a welcome. little film slate icon. You know, the, it's just like the clip icon you do when you clip. So for more cool. information, just go to Twitch's blog and find out about that. Um, that's all for Zelda Universe related announcements. Realms of the Wild related announcements is that our MVP poll winner from last week's episode, well deserved in my opinion, is Pierre. Hey! Woo! So, Pierre, go ahead and write down an additional legend point. Feel free to use it today or not. Up to you. <laughs> or not. Okay. That makes me feel comfortable <laughs> about this campaign, Elias. <laughs> Other than that, just more of the same, um, some specific new layout features uh, to Realms is that you can see a somewhat visual component of our announcements onto the side. And once we switch to our game view, um, you'll see updated character info cards, as well as not this week, but eventually recent Rupee Redemptions. Um, we're trying to, to see if we can get that data from Streamlabs to display in our layout. So look forward to that stuff. And of course, uh, this is a once every other week show. So look forward to that once every other week. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> you got this, Elias. I believe in you. That's all the announcements. Do any of you have any personal announcements of projects or appearances or anything that you would like to announce now or forever hold your peace? If you happen to be in the Bay Area and want to see me act as a nun and a hooker, I have a show that's starting in March. I have Whoa. so many questions. <laughs> what a transition. <laughs> so, <laughs> since Elias and I live near each other, I think a road trip north is... 
Yes, I, I want details of that. Maybe I'll tell my parents to go. <laughs> we will. Be like, what's yes. happening? Oh, I should also mention, um, wow, I totally forgot about this. We have a guest this uh, week he on, our, on our show. You. Uh, Jonathan Massiello, uh, he goes by Sad or Not Online, and he is our official character artist. So all the cool artwork you see on our streams is all done by him. So give him a big hand and welcome him to playing with us in what possibly might be his, I don't know, I was trying to make that sound ominous. The power's getting to me. All right. Great. Yay, I, think John. That's, I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. I should really stop stalling because I only have two hours to tell this story, and it's... You have an hour and 55, actually. Did you write us an epic? I wrote basically the Odyssey in Zelda form? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, so, so that would be so much the fun, end. though. <laughs> With that all in mind, let us dive into realms of the wild. <clears throat> Whoa. So for Zolta, Kestrel, and Pierre, think back to your first day here in this the same but also different world the sky is slightly different color it's it's a very bizarre experience that you're not quite used to but you've made it to kakariko village you made it to the end it's time to get some sleep zolta in the food pantry and you are finally able to doze off zolta you in your dark subconsciousness, start to hear this very, very slight, very subtle, just bass line, this tr strumming bass line. It gets louder, gets louder. It's Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> Almost like Stairway to Heaven. No. <laughs> Until finally, it gets really loud when you're jolted awake. And you open your eyes, and this is not where you fell asleep. You are in a cart. What the F? Surrounded by three other Zora. One of them is resting their head on your shoulder. I pushed the head off my shoulder. You pushed the head off the shoulder. <laughs> he was sleeping too. He jolts awake, very disoriented. You look around. You see something very similar to Hyrule Field. The Hyrule field you came into this very morning, but it looks a little different. The hills are a little different. Everything's a little off. Does the it sky look is still that weird color. Me though. Yeah. Oh my God! Is this if she had gotten captured? Because now I'm oh, no. You look. Oh, you look no. back behind you. There's a fifth Zora, manning some horses, pulling the carriage, and that's the first thing that catches your attention but the second thing is you are in front of a massive wall the massive gate and the driver has stopped the cart and has gotten down and talked to the guards in front of the gate trying to get them let in what are you doing um do the people around me look like they are bound am i bound no one is bound um you do quickly realize where the bass sound was coming from and that the other side of the cart, one of the Zora there is just strumming along a very handcrafted bass guitar. Just Aww, strumming. Zolta was partying hardy with the band last night. <laughs> hey. You don't want to know what Zolta gets up to. Ooh. So, <laughs> uh, I look at this person who is awake and seems to be doing things and what is happening just but low hopefully not to disturb this lovely guard conversation that is happening as well doesn't seem to be paying you too much mind just sort of keeps drumming the uh the fourth zora the one who wasn't resting on your shoulder is sort of looking you but not not really saying much little confused look can I throw something? Like, is there something close by that I could throw? Make a quick perception roll. Make it quick. 
Uh. I assume I don't have advantage on that. Five. Mm -hmm. Five. And we're off. You find a stick. You, you find a you stick. I found a up. stick. I throw it. Very at the small guy. stick. I don't care. I'm throwing it at the guy playing the bass. All right. Make a uh, might roll. I don't want to hit him. No, I don't want to hurt him. I hope you hit him. Just with a tiny ass little stick. Yeah. <laughs> I have no plans to hurt him. I'm just getting his attention. 13. 13 goes right past his head, but it does get his attention. Perfect. I repeat, What's up? what the F is going on? He just looks over to the other Zora who is looking at you and keeps strumming his bass and the other Zora sort of sits up, a little worried expression, turns to you and be like, well, we finally made it to the gate. Dozed off for a bit, but we're just about ready to head on in. Where are we going? Well, into the city. Why? I mean, why? It's our next gig. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I knew I knew you're a little bit of a diva, but don't go full diva on it. Oh my gosh, yeah! Oh, I love this so much. Thank you, Elias. I have an internal struggle here. Well, while out you of, have your internal character. struggle. Out of character. The internal struggle of I would embrace this. Would Zolta embrace this? Hey. While you have that <laughs> internal struggle. <laughs> Pierre. Ah, that's me. Hello. Are you sure? Wait, wait. No one's explained this whole thing. Is this out of character? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. like, what is going on? It's really just us calling ourselves losers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I heard that's an easy way in an old D&D &D group many, many years ago for me of like, this was just an easy way to go. <laughs> You're not talking as you. And I dig it. It just kind of caught on. Also, it's and funny. It, it is yeah. funny. Yes, I am Pierre. Pierre, <laughs> you uh, slowly begin to to get conscious, and you you don't hear anything very subtly because you are just instantly awake, and you're awake because your body has been tipped over to the side. And you're not sure why, but you look around and you see three Zora in a cart. <gasps> oh, shiz, guys, we're all Zoras! We're a band! <laughs> Wait, am I a Zora, though? Am I a Zora now? Make a perception are. roll. <laughs> <laughs> you all are going if, to need last If we're night. all in the same cart, oh then yeah, God. man, we all Zoras. <laughs> Dang! I got Get name. last names, uh, some kind of crazy lineage, <laughs> and a snooty attitude. Okay. Uh, okay. What was what was the roll? Ten. Ten. Uh, you are absolutely Zora. Yeah, <laughs> I have my accordion. <laughs> you you do look down, and you feel an accordion there. It's about the same size and shape, but you pull it out, and it's not your accordion. Oh shit! It's a different one that feels familiar, but it's mostly made out of fish bones and skins and very, very homebrew kind of accordion. Also a little bit ew. <laughs> ew, yeah. So That's we're an alternative. You, you, uh, you turn to your left and the Zora there is trying to whisper under her voice, what is going on? <laughs> I believe I said, what the F is going on? Something like that. Yes. And the other uh, Zora just explained to them what was going on. A what gig? would you like to do? A gig, you say? Are we doing a concert? Not a concert. We're just, you know, trying to get away from all the bad stuff out there here in the city where it's a lot safer. So we're just trying to get our permits set up in a corner and play till we decide to move on. I mean, what? I know you guys have been a little out of it recently. I know the whole honeymoon phase is a little off, but, you know, just, uh... <laughs> are you guys okay? Are you feeling okay? What do you mean honeymoon phase? <laughs> yes. Oh, honeymoon you guys phase. are Manelli, you guys. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> did, did you guys go on a honeymoon? I don't know. <laughs> oh my wait, gosh. Wait, 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 hold on. What? 
Well, we're all through the reality, is it, Elias? Do I realize this is Pierre yet? Uh, no. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, then I just size up the other door to see if they're attractive. Uh, Delta is sizing up the stream of hers at this point. Oh, dear. how well do I dream? Make a uh, make a will check. <laughs> Five. 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 He no. is drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> Hell yeah. Pierre. Hey, listen, that's what Pierre is. Okay. Can tell, so I mean, you know. Zolta like gives him the once over up and down and goes. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. need something stronger than water. Thanks, Elias. <laughs> All right. This is the greatest Based campaign. on your memory loss, it sounds like you've already had something stronger than water. <laughs> I <Woo>! possibly. <laughs> um, <laughs> while that situation is unfolding, <laughs> meanwhile, grips with their current situation. Oh my god. <laughs> Kestrel. Yes, sir. You slowly come to with your head down in your arms. And uh, you slowly look up, and you are in what looks like some kind of tavern. Aha! She's already And uh, across the uh, table from you is this kind of impatient looking Gerudo woman. And uh, you look around and just see uh, Patrons, you know, they're, they're going to the counter. There's one woman who goes to the counter, um, pays for her meal, and looks at you, who just clearly woke up. And she snickers, and she goes, I'd recommend the uh, Cuckoo Gyro. What? Very good. Thanks again for the meal, Hal Lampos. <laughs> Guy behind the bar. No problem, Annabelle. What is oh, it? my God. <laughs> she exits. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, I would like to very sleepily, like, look around, be like, do I recognize this bar? Did I somehow sleepwalk my way back from my room and fall asleep in the tavern? Make a learning roll. Haha, <laughs> joke's on you. I'm aggressive at learning. Are you aggressive enough? How do you oh. aggressively learn? <laughs> Well, I think you should spend some time with me and some and my research. <laughs> Have you not been around Kiri enough yet? No! We're freaking out well, in LA this year. I mean, that. to be 20, you can never be around her. 22. Aww. This is this is not a, a tavern or a, a, a place that you don't think you've ever been before. All of this looks very, very foreign. The food maybe looks somewhat familiar, like the kind of food. Like, you've maybe had this kind of food once or twice, but... It's all very unfamiliar. You don't recognize any of these people. Nothing. What did I drink last night? The uh, Gerudo woman across the table kind of stops looking at the door with a ice cold stare and looks back to you and like, is that why I, is that why you're so sleepy? I don't know. Come on, not today. Uh, what? What? I'm good. I'm good. I'm cool. You Who sure? <laughs> nice. Real funny. Look, I want to get out of here and get on with the meeting as much as you, but uh, we're stuck waiting for this dude. I mean, do you know this guy? Like, well? Oh, me? Um, yeah. <laughs> you invited him here. I can honestly say I have no idea. Comforting. <clears throat> you know what? Uh, uh, Lampos is it? Yes, you want gyro? You want two gyros? Well, just two gyros coming up. And he walks back in the kitchen. <laughs> um. Oh, ice. Are we in a Chipotle? <laughs> it is a Chipotle. <laughs> I wish Chipotle served gyros. No, um, I know. I know. Sorry. <laughs> next year. Next now next I'm year. just sad. 
<laughs> Turned off my nice I know music. it's not a thing. I know ah, that's, a, that's that. a Greek thing. I just had to make that joke because it's um, Elias. You never know. Yeah, Stroll, go ahead and make a uh, perception roll. Also, if it's not clear, all of my dancing is out of character. <laughs> Same. But, you know, it's very cold for some reason in this house right now. Dancing uh, warms you up. Perception. Where I have I... a degree in this. <laughs> uh, somehow I magically rolled. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. 19. 19. 19. Okay. Um, as you sort of take in your surroundings, you feel a familiar sort of like bump against your hip. You look down and there's there's your hook shot. Oh, thank God. Kind of. <laughs> what do you mean, kind of? <laughs> well, you look at it a little closer and it's, I mean, it is a hook shot. It's not your hook shot though. Now, what does that mean? Like, I don't think you understand my relationship with that hook shot. <laughs> You don't, you have no idea what it means. It's just no, I need to a know, similar like, hook shot. Does it look like it's more polished? Does it look like? It looks pretty old, but newer than yours. Okay. So it looks more like, like when I say polished, I mean like it might've been put together with someone who maybe knew a bit more of what they were doing rather Probably. than going, what does this do? Probably. Okay. Uh, with a 19, you also um, just feel a fold with a piece of parchment on your uh, on your hip, and you take it out and look at it, and it's just a a message that comes in on writers every now and then. Um, it's it's a report. It's talking about increased monster sightings out in Hyrule Field. Um, some someone that that claims to be some like a marshal of some kind, and that uh, they're thankful that you've agreed to meet with them, and. It is signed, Atticus Zarak. Aha! Atticus. Wait, real quick. Yes. Um, when looking down, do I know? Am I wearing something different? You are wearing completely different clothes. God. <laughs> as far oh, as Kess knows, oh, up to this oh, point, uh, she's been very drunk. <laughs> what am I wearing? You are also wearing completely different clothes. But what are they? Uh, yeah, same. What what am I wearing? Who am I wearing? Y'all naked. <laughs> uh, oh my. Well, they, that was quite a honeymoon. They uh <laughs> still going. They they they're somewhat similar outfits but not matching per se. They're just sort of a uh, you know, sim similar theme. They're kind of bluish. Um kind of similar to what you you wear Zolta but not as, you know, like button up. They're kind of more just like lax casual Zora clothes. I, I was wearing a vest and short shorts. How casual can you get from that? Uh, cut off -y kind of jeans and more of like a t-shirt kind of vibe. Okay. Does the blue clash with my skin color? Uh, what is your... You'll find out in a minute. <laughs> okay. Atticus. <clears throat> Howdy. You have just arrived in Hyrule City. You have begun to walk your horse up to the stables, sign it in, and uh, as you're going through this process, you know, it takes a while for them to come back with a, I don't know, receipt or something, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, starts, horses. Starts, Maybe they email starts to get a know. lot of attention. Uh, there's a woman that, that, that comes up to you and be like, you have a very nice horse here. Well, thank you, ma'am. Name's Artax. Artax. Wow. She uh, she glances at your clothing. Oh, you're a marshal. That's right, ma'am. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing for me. I just, uh, thank you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your service. Of course, ma'am. It's my duty to serve. That, uh, that accent, are you from uh, Talon Town? That's right, it's exactly where I'm from. Starting your most recently added audiobook. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, who, who's Alexa? 
<laughs> I am glad I don't have my speaker. Sorry, I thought I, I thought I saw someone. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that that uh, my father spent some time in his youth in Talentown. Had nothing but nice things to say about it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a great town. I I was a ranch hand there for a while at uh, Lon Lon. I see. Well, I've got to be on with my day, but you have a nice one, sir. You too, ma'am. You too. And she walks off. You get your sign-in paperwork. You are ready to uh, be on your way to do what you came here to do. What would you like to do? Uh, what am I supposed to be doing, I guess? You, you, uh, you came here um, because you uh, have had a very large uptick in monster sightings and activity. Uh, mm. to the point where it, it killed someone you knew. And uh, and so you've been communicating with other marshals, uh, people in the Royal Guard. And finally, it seems like there's been enough collective reports that, that you've sort of been summoned to talk about it here. So you're here to meet your contact, Carol. Uh, then I would like to head to wherever I'm supposed to meet this contact, if I know okay. where that is. You do. It, they left the meeting place. Um, Roll a, uh, we'll call this perception. Uh, okay. Perception. Sorry, I don't know this sheet all that well. There we go, 1d8. Hmm. Nine. It takes you uh, a little while, but <laughs> you, uh, I you hate finally, the city. <laughs> you finally make it to the Hero of Time. This uh, tavern, uh, somewhat close to the castle border. And uh, you walk right on in. I'm sorry, can you repeat the name of that again? The Hero of Time. <laughs> Get out. <clears throat> um, Kestrel. As I'm you're, hero now, you guys. <laughs> as you are uh, sort of finding all this stuff on your person, and the your Gerudo companion here seemingly seems to have their eyes deadlocked on the door. In walks in this older, kind of really gruff-looking guy. Um, he seems to be looking for someone. Uh, Atticus. You see exactly who you're supposed to meet. Uh, I guess I walk over. This is this is Carol, right? Carol. Yep. Uh, then I guess I walk over and say, "Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've met." You've worked uh, a couple times out in the field. Sometimes criminals get out of the city and out into your jurisdiction, and you've, you've teamed up. Got a got a nice respect for her in her scale. All right, then I walk up and and kind of give a slight, like, you know, hat tip, sort of. Howdy, ma'am. It's good to see you. It's been a while since we worked together. Is that to me. He says that to you. Yes. Um. <laughs> you... Kind of have a moment of. <laughs> you didn't tell yes! me this. <laughs> yes. Because we have worked together before. We know each other very decently. Middling to fair, really. I... This is my associate. You should introduce yourselves to each other. Because I don't believe you've met. No, we haven't. <laughs> and the Gerudo uh, steps up, kind of eyeballing you up and down. You've never seen this uh, Gerudo before. But you recognize her clothing. She's also a marshal. Uh, Name's Suket. Guys, I think I'm with Law Enforcement. Come from the Gerudo. What, 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 what's her name? Suket. Uh, do I, do I have a, a notebook on me still? You do. Okay. It's okay. not at all filled with what you've written down. I'm going to ignore that disappointment briefly and just surreptitiously jot down people's names. <laughs> <laughs> S-U-K-A-E-T. <laughs> Wait, does she still have her notebook, or is this a different? It's a different notebook. Different notebook. It's similar, but different. 
Name's Suket. Nice to meet you. And you are? Uh, I extend out my hand to, like, handshake. Atticus. He kind of looks at it and just sort of like, okay, and shakes it. Atticus is rack, man. What uh, what what division you work in? Where where's your uh, uh, what do police call their uh, <laughs> what do they call? <laughs> jurisdiction. They're where's called your, jurisdictions. Where's your, where's your jurisdiction at? Well, in case it wasn't glaringly obvious, I'm over in the Gerudo Desert, uh, and I think I'm here for the same reason you are. We're supposed to have a meeting with some of the, the council members up in the castle. And we were kind of just waiting on you. Isn't that right, Carol? Not not re recognizing my own name because I- Carol? Carol, are you all right? You seem a little- just Writing. Insane. What? Oh! I, th I think she's hung over. I am uh... Carol. <laughs> I am Carol? No, oh, I'm Carol. Carol. Well, this has been awkward, <laughs> but I think we should probably get going. Great, and well, she I, starts I, to walk out the door. I assume that this uh, this other marshal knows the kind of backstory, or has already been like filled in on at least the information that I know. You could try and ask at some point if you get a chance. Okay. She seems intent on getting to the meeting that you're apparently all supposed to be at. Okay. Do you guys stay in the tavern or follow her? Or what uh, you um, y yeah, you know what? And on the way, let's let's recap exactly. Just just so we're all on the same page and we know we all have each other's information. I'm going to look through my note. Is there anything in that notebook prior it's to just, what I just wrote? It's just random like stuff. It almost reads like a diary list like names that you don't recognize um events that you don't know about um it's just all random goblet goot to you okay just like, da, da, da. so are <laughs> Nothing you helpful for like context of where i am or what i'm doing so you followed the grudo out yeah okay atticus yeah okay so you guys are making your way to the hyrule castle gates Meanwhile, we go back to our young couple in love. <laughs> I, never in not. my head, we have started couples counseling. <laughs> um, as you guys are sort of sizing each other up, or at least Zolta sizing Pierre up. Ha, um, size. What? Crazy. <laughs> it's innuendo. Um, the uh, the Zora that was talking to the guards comes back to uh, the horse, and uh, the gates crack open and come open, and you guys are led into the town square of Hi. a giant city. You have not seen a city with this kind of make, like a hylian based city, ever. It's huge. While this is happening, I would uh, I would like to be muttering under my breath. Um, what did that waiter give me? Obviously, he's going to get a talking to tomorrow. That poor uh, waiter! The the waiter. <laughs> he's the waiter that you accidentally fired that wouldn't even work there? Sure. <laughs> sure so I'm in a storeroom right now. I know where my character is mentally. So hang on. Point in the game. So you're mumbling this, right? Yes. Um, Pierre, make a uh, perception check. Twenty-four. You hear this woman who is apparently your wife um, start to mutter in a very <laughs> familiar and pretentious sounding voice. Um, <laughs> the recent events you remember from before you woke up in this precarious scenario. You remember uh, your real Zora friend, Zolta, trying to get a random her. Patreon random patron to be a waitstaff and you Not hear her trying. muttering this under your <laughs> under her breath <laughs> he got me my food that voice on zulta is that you um do i Zulta's recognize him as pierre yet the inflection <laughs> sounds familiar make a uh 
make a learning check. Oh yeah, Casalta doesn't realize she's not the same, Zora. Ten. It, uh, the tone and the like. This is a, a a tone of inflection of question you've gotten used to over the past day, um, and so it does ring a bell. I turn to the other side. I want a divorce. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the other two Zora, no, the other three Zora, even the one driving the horses sort of turns back and they all sort of just look around at each other and be like, Can I the one who was talking to earlier is like, that was quick. <laughs> Can I make a perception check to be like, wait, what is she talking about? Uh, what are you trying to, to figure out? We were married, what? Huh? Yeah, nope. you, you've kind nope, of inferred that they've referred to, each, to you two as, as a couple and reference to honeymoon uh so culturally speaking do zora wear some kind of wedding band bracelet anything like that make a learning check roll higher than a 10 please Fourteen. um yes it's not a, it's not a ring but it's kind of like a a necklace kind of ornament um, that sort of has matching symmetry, oh. and uh, you you look over, and he's he's definitely got one, and you sort of look down at yours, and you have a matching one. I take it off. <laughs> the other, the other, the, the one that was playing bass kind of stops, and they they sort of look at each other, and they just are trying to like avoid eye contact with the two of you, You're trying to like let y'all do your thing. Um, at this point, the carriage sort of comes to a stop at the, uh, into a somewhat remote uh, uh, corner of the town square. And uh, the guy <laughs> driving, trying to keep his mind off of whatever the heck's going on behind him, um, he, he just starts getting out and, and the, other, the other two start getting out and they start unloading a couple of, of uh, crates and, and items and stuff in the back. And they seem like they're starting to set up uh, something. Well. This has gotten far more awkward than I was ever expecting. I'm going to definitely have words with that waiter. You don't remember who, you don't know who I am, don't you? You're, you're that weird bird thing. <laughs> ah, so you that do weird. remember. <laughs> hey, hey, let's be honest. She's not wrong. Um, let's be honest. It's been a day. I will <laughs> It's been a single day. Um, the the Zora who was who was driving uh, calls up Param, come give us a hand. Hmm? Oh, me. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I I I can't. I'm. We'll talk about this later. And then I go grab some random crate, and then just. Uh, so I'm just really enjoying Kestrel becoming Carol and Pierre becoming Param, by the way. <laughs> You're going to enjoy it more in two seconds. <laughs> what have you done with the Z name? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever oh, the, the same I, Zora... I, I stole them all. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever the same Zora looks up to you and, and uh, I don't know, do something used for Zalu. Could you spell Zalu. that, please? Z A L U, Zalu. All right. I do something useful. I start cracking lightning between my fingers, which works. Um, do I that this? makes. Have you taken away my death powers? <laughs> um, as as the unloading's going on, uh, it starts to gather some attention from people, and they oh, what's going on? Um, one woman comes up and be like, oh, are you guys setting up to play? Um, yeah. Oh. I, oh. I try to reach out and feel the life of the city. Uh, okay. Is that something you roll for? I don't know your characters that well. Yeah, I can... Go just ahead and, do, and like, roll whatever. And, and whatever. Gee, Elias, whatever. I can't believe you don't know our characters. What roll your yourself. I just got her character sheet like, like 
couple hours ago. 22. Hey, you rolled You well. feel, as far as you can reach, you can feel a lot of people. Okay. I can still feel life. Um, the woman sort of gives up talking to you and sort of goes up to uh, you and uh, the, the, the guy that asked you to help uh, unload. Be like, are you some sort of traveling troop? And uh, the other Zora just be like, "Yeah, yes, we are. You're talking to the fishy five, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> I stop what I'm doing and go, oh, God, no. I officially do not feel as bad about Carol anymore. <laughs> like, I oh, I'm done. When are you guys going to get set up? I'd love to hear you play. And uh, he responds with, uh, well, we got to go get our permits from the castle. And as soon as we do that, we are good to go. <laughs> she goes, okay, I'll be back. And she, she runs off and he just sort of thinks and goes, speaking of, Param, Zula, you guys are the talkers of the group. Can you go and meet up with uh, Soza up at the castle and try and go get our permit? Seems to always uh... go faster whenever you guys are up there. Sure. Why not? Oh my god. He, he leans over to your ear, Pierre, and he's just like, I might give you a chance to work out whatever issues you got going on. And just sort of awkwardly walks away. Just as a married couple saying sure at the exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> up. So uh, what are you guys doing? Um, I am currently looking for the closest bar to get a quick drink before doing whatever the heck. I'm, I'm, I, going, I, I'm going with it. I Easily enough, you guys find one. Um, you guys drink it very quickly, and then what? Do we know decide to go. Else in this bar? What the hell is going on, Pierre? I have or no idea. Parnum or whatever the heck your name is apparently here. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Do they have? Did they give you a name? I. They didn't. I don't. Oh, Z uh, Zula, right? But that's not my name. I know it's not your name, Zolta. I, know I it's believe not your name. it was Zalu. What? Zalu? I don't know. <laughs> but the uh... voice of Kestrel suddenly rings out in your voice. <laughs> Kestrel must be here too. That's weird. Hmm. <laughs> we look around for Kess. You do not see. <laughs> I wonder if that drink that I, I got from the bartender after you know she walked you into that cellar, slipped something in, because I don't remember this at all. All I remember is think, drinking and then going to bed. I don't think that anything in the cellar is releasing poisonous gas that is making me hallucinate. I think it was that waiter. I think that for whatever reason, that he just really didn't want to do his job that day this, and Zolta. got mad at me for making him do his job like any respectable citizen would. Zolta, he wasn't a waiter. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> he was yeah. just there enjoying okay. the thing. There's a, but, at the bar you're at, there's a Zora <laughs> at the bar who's overhearing this. He's like, can y'all take this outside, please? We don't want to hear your spat. I well, glare <laughs> at the Zora at the bar. I Why would you call it a down. spat? Look, I don't want to get into We're like a this. couple or something? Just We're just, not a couple. Just leave me alone, lady. Oh, crap. Going back to Zolta's character, that's an offense to her. Um, we're just going to go. Here, here's some money. We're going we're gonna to go. I we're going to walk. I start crackling lightning between my fingers, ready to attack the person and no, I assume no, no, Peter no. drags me out before I can. We are not getting kicked out of this town two minutes in before we figure out what the hell is going on. No. Who no. cares? It's a dream. It doesn't matter. We don't know if it's a dream yet. Well, whatever it is, it's weird. <laughs> I know it's weird, but I don't know what to do about it. Well, just kill everything and then we can wake up, right? Violet that's how is things not the work. Answer. I don't know what the don't let yet. Delta do anything. <laughs> that's how it works in dreams. No, you hear Kess's no, voice no, yet again. No, <laughs> If you die, works, Zulta, if you die in the one shot, you die for real. <laughs> but if I kill everyone else, no. I wake up. I don't that's how that's... it's worked in all my other dreams. I so you guys have this, this argument, dream. which by the way, everyone around you can hear, <laughs> um, as you walk up to the the castle gate, which is a pretty like open, blatant path. It's it's the main path that leads out of out of Hyrule Square. <laughs> 
Um, you guys approach the gate, and there are two guards there that are just sort of awkwardly watching as you guys argue and come to the gate before they stand attention. Can we help you? Yes. Hello. <laughs> um, we're part of the Fishy Five. We're here to get our permits to perform. <laughs> no, we're not. This is all just a weird hallucination. Uh, so you're here to see Councilman Souza? Yes. Uh, I gave Zolta I, a look and just be like, let's I, just roll with it. Let's see what happens. I think he's busy. Zolta doesn't get that look. I think he's busy, but we'll send word. He, I, If he's expecting you, we'll probably hear something. And he turns to the other guard. The other guard sneaks his way into the gate and, and goes to to the castle. If you could just wait here for a moment, we should have an answer for you shortly. Are you going to offer us any food or drink while we wait? At the gate? What is your dysfunction? <laughs> no. Z Zolta. Let's let's not let's let's see where this goes. This is why Zora villages are better. And as we see where this goes, Atticus and Kestrel. <clears throat> um <laughs> Uh, I lost her name already, but Suket is uh, he's leading. He's kind of le leading the the charge. Not a, not the most patient person. Um, up the path towards the uh, the castle gate. As uh, Kess, you are searching these these weird dire entries and everything that doesn't mean anything to you. Atticus, are you just along for the ride? Is uh. Is it Carell or Carol? Because the way you spelled it when you said K E R A L. Carl. Sounds a lot like Carol. Carol. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. No. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> because you're happy. <laughs> and we're muted. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Holding or, it back to the pre stream. Because no. you're Zora. <laughs> that nobody knows about. Cool. So I turn, I turn, if she's next to me, I turn to her and I'm like, I kind of like point to uh, the Gerudo and I'm like, what's her deal? She seems to be in a, quite the rush. Heard that. I'm just silent after that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I, I must have had something a lot to, I think someone slipped me something. I'm feeling well, I, I, last <laughs> Last time we worked a job together, I mean, I remember you being a little of a party animal, but this is, uh, this is something else. Party animal. Do I have friends? As you <laughs> come to the realization that this life might be better than your actual life. <laughs> oh, sad! <laughs> but true. Hey! But true. Um, hey, now. Th the two of you meet up, uh, go up to the gate, and Atticus... You haven't really been to the castle, like, you've only ever been once, whenever you were appointed as a marshal. Um, but you only see one guard at the gate, which is unusual. There's always at least two, as far as you know. Um, but there's one there, and then a, a couple of bickering Zora off to the side. And uh, Suket goes up to the guard to go, she sort of flashes her marshal's badge. And you go, we're here for the, the council meeting. Can we can we get in? And he's like, oh, um, yes, I can't let you in unless there's someone else here. And then as he says that, the uh, other guard comes back with a third person, a very short just person. He also seems very young. Um, but he's got a bunch of official garments on. It's a very, it's a, it's a weird sight. And uh, he comes up, and uh, he 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 sort of scans the crowd and sees you two, Pierre and Zolta. Because mm. you two, you're with the Fishy Five. Yes. Okay, good. My name is Nokos. I uh, I'm the the assistant to the council, and uh, I'm here to escort you to meet with so so that you guys can get your permit squared away. And oh, oh, uh, are these? And he turns to the guard. Are these marshals? He goes, yes. He's like, well, why? Why aren't you letting? Well, I couldn't. And so it's like, oh, okay. And he's like, you, you five, just come on, come on in. 
so random sorry random question as you've now mentioned height now that i have been walking around a lot of people am i taller you... like have i noticed a weird purport because this is something as a short person when i wear different shoes i notice this you uh as you've been walking and noticing your surroundings it all seems the same eye level same eye line okay. as cool. that you're used to just Whatever that is. Do... Such sadness in me. I was so hopeful that suddenly six. <laughs> she foot. is two feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Does Dier recognize Kess at all, or Carol? Carol. To my Carol. knowledge, Carol. to my knowledge, I don't Carol. know what I look like. I'm assume like Kess is assuming she looks the same because there's nothing so far that is nothing out of the ordinary has has caught your opinion. You haven't seen a mirror or anything, but yeah. um. You, I don't think Kestrel has said enough in your presence to really give any context clues, so you probably wouldn't pick up on that yet. Okay. Kestrel hasn't said anything in your presence, technically. Yeah, there you go. Hey, well, hey. So, uh, so the, 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 uh, yeah, it's well, five. The five, the five of you guys are, are led by uh, Nokos up to the castle, um, and the, the doors are let open as I change the music. Uh, as we are walking along, I would like to have a conversation with Pierre uh, to really explain that no, he was a waiter. He brought me my food and drink. I gave him a tip. Clearly, Wait. he was a waiter. Are you literally still talking about <laughs> I this? I am still talking about okay. this. Roll, make Very... a perception roll. Very <laughs> slow. Okay, hang on. Can we all hear this? I mean, uh, make it. You can make a perception roll too. Let's let's not let's not parse hairs here. Zolta has never been a quiet person. No. So even though I rolled a sad little eight, I feel like I should still hear it. You hear, <laughs> waiter, 14. definitely waiter. I'm right. You're wrong, waiter. Okay. Given when, given when we just <laughs> fell asleep. And uh, Atticus, you just heard all of what she said. I'm how, just gonna how familiar slowly... am I with Zora? Because I, I don't know how common they are out. Like, I mean, they don't make your way to, to town town that much. Um, you know, it's it's a little dusty over there, and they're pretty water based. Um, you've seen uh, some traveling traders, some music groups, but uh, you know, maybe as much as about the average person you think. I turn to Carol and say, as as under my breath as I can. Are Zora always like this? Slowly turn. Do Look I hear here. that? Wait, do I hear that? Um, I, so I you turn. No. You turn to who and say that? Uh, Carol. Oh, okay. Me. Um, roll a perception check, Zolta. Is roll high. Nope. One. <laughs> I am so busy ranting about yes. your wings. I need to prove that I am correct. I don't care what these people are doing. Kess, feel free to matter. respond if, yeah, if you wish. So while staring very suspiciously at this Zora, who looks nothing, I'm assuming, like Zolta. She, you it, know what? It's it's actually a little off-putting. Um, the Zora look different. Okay. Like really, really different. Like you can tell they're still Zora, but it's Just like. like a bird. Okay. Yeah. It looks a really, they look like really weird Zora. Okay, am I still blue or am I that weird like pink? You are a shade of blue. Okay. So am I that... still blue? What, what do I look like? You are, Besides you have very blue. similar skin tone to uh, Zolta. Ah! Is my head the same? No. Am so... I one of those like hammerhead based Zora now? You Are can't you tell you don't on? know. Let me I know. Continue. Are there any mirrors in this hallway? <laughs> we're not in a hallway. Can we're I... outside a gate. Can I tell? We were walking to where we needed to go. Can okay. I see? Can I tell what? What? Can I retroactively change my comment based on? <laughs> no, no, you can't. I really want to respond to that comment. Kestrel, <laughs> what would you like to respond? To? <laughs> because taking that in, I want to completely deadpan respond with. I can confidently say that is exactly how every Zora I have ever met has ever acted. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Just like, 
<laughs> Confirming my suspicions. <laughs> um, um, you guys do get into the castle and see a a very. I mean, this is what you'd expect from the royal family of Hyrule. Like it's it's immaculate. Um, there are staircases that lead everywhere, which way, portraits on the wall. In the center of it all, there's this magnificent statue of, uh, of uh, this, this sort of young man holding up a sword like this. Atticus, you've heard of the Hero of Time many, many times. Definitely uh, checks out as a statue to the Hero of Time. Everyone else, maybe. I just um, see a man with a sword. That's interesting. I no just see a place where I actually belong. This is a much better hallucination than it was before. <laughs> Nokos leads you up one of. Like you. Sorry, you were saying. Do you uh, say that out loud about yes. hallucinations? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> just constantly looking back, of like, is this? Just roll. Make a logic roll. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-six. You okay. are pretty sure that's Zolta. Okay, how how close is she to me right now? Uh, you guys are kind of huddled. Uh, Nokos is kind of leading the group about ten feet up, and and uh, so following a little behind. All right. The rest, all, of, right. all four of you guys are kind of clustered. Kind of want to drop so I can try to surreptitiously talk to this Zora, who is. Um, and just be like, Zolta, is that you? What happened to your face? <laughs> uh, Zolta, yeah, you. you you see standing next to you Ashika. Aha! Um, with red eyes, and someone who is definitely not Kestrel. Again, who the f are you? Do I notice anything? You, yeah, you overhear her asking if that's Zolta. If, yeah. That, you guys are close. Enough. That is Zolta. Is that? Is that Kess? In before someone randomly turns to me and goes, <laughs> Aruna? <laughs> <laughs> it was my plan the whole no. <laughs> So as you guys are sort of coming to this collective realization, Nokos leads you up one of these staircases and meets with this other man who's kind of got this very confident pose and he's overseeing a portrait being hung on the wall, a, a new, what looks like a very shiny brand new portrait. He goes, no, no the angle's all wrong. It's got to be straighter. <laughs> okay, no, it's just, you know what? Lower it, split. Make it we'll gay. come back to this. And he uh, turns to <laughs> to uh, Nokos. It's Nokos. This is uh, Zalu and Param from the Fishy Five. They're here to get their permit. Uh, he goes, oh, well, uh, hello. My name is, uh... I forgot his name already. I'm so good. <laughs> my, name is, my name is Soza, but I think we've met before, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, I'm very bad with names. As am I. Soza, you said? Yes. And I uh, don't think there will be any problem getting your permit. You probably will have to wait just a little while. I'm supposed to be in this council meeting. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a whole thing. I don't want to go into it. But uh, And he looks to see the uh, the the two marshals. I you, mean, Atticus. maybe you should go into it. <laughs> yes, you're supposed to be in a council meeting, but I see you've been having trouble hanging this lovely portrait. Oh, I haven't been ha having trouble. It's these servants. They just... Oh, I, my no. goodness. You know what? Let us take care of this. We'll dismiss the servants. I've heard marshals are very good at getting things straight and narrow. Oh, well, that that would be nice, but unfortunately the marshals are part of the meeting. And he turns to... Uh, oh, how interesting. Why don't we go to the meeting and then they'll hang it afterwards? Well, I mean... It, the meetings strictly need to know, oh, unless I you've seen any, us. unless so, you've seen any any like monster sightings or or been 
You know, you I think we have in our uh, travels to the city, um, our group, actually, that's part of the reason they sent us up here was they wanted us to let you know about some of the monsters we saw. Roll deception. Under Kess's breath, she mutters, well, I know this can't be a dream because Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> am Not I near, have am included I near, her. Am I near uh, Carol? You hear everything that's happening. You're near everything, yes. <laughs> oh, God. Your role, Zolta? Okay. Uh, he sort of cocks his eyebrow and he looks to you, Pierre. Uh, Pierre and he goes, Really? Um, yes. One minute. And he, he rushes into the, the chambers where it looks like the meeting's about to take place. About five or ten seconds, he goes, uh, We could probably use all the reports we can get. And uh, Impa says it's okay. So. Sure, we can all we can all uh, join in, and he sort of ushers everyone. Everyone who's there, no coast, everybody no, 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 no. comes into the. <laughs> <laughs> um, out of character, imp in my head. Say... Did you just see what imp in my head yes. said in chat? Yeah, the servers have seen a real monster, Zoltan. Zoltan. <laughs> <laughs> Having worked, oh, yeah, in you're right. Maybe I should. Yeah, maybe I should you should are a monster. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know what? <laughs> Bravo! This is head. the greatest episode of this entire show. <laughs> Nothing will. So, I'm so only happy because I can screw with it. everything. I'm very happy with where this occurs in the show, <laughs> so that I can bring it back to the. <laughs> because hey. I really, feel, I really feel that's the crux of Zolta's character. It's a, it's a great moment in Zolta's character. <laughs> so. I'm gonna have a little mini internal anxiety attack of, gosh dang it, why do I keep going back to Impa? <laughs> well, it's funny actually. You, you all sort of file into the room and, and you see, for the most part, a bunch of men that are just sort of sitting around uh, the table. They had a table standing up. You see another Shika. It does not look at all like the Impa you know. Very tall, uh, younger probably 30s maybe, um, and very just like air of confidence, woman in charge, not to where it's like, a you know, she's full of herself, but like, you don't want to cross this person. Um, Do I know? Uh, you, Atticus, have met Impa once she officiated your martial uh, ceremony. Cool. She gave but you revenge. But this is clear that this is supposed to be Impa. Yes, it, okay. it seems like an, enough people sort of just with body language, there's an air of respect around her. I'm going to stop and then have a moment of, well, this provides a very confusing and uncomfortable moment for me. <laughs> and uh, as you sort of uh, all come to grips with this, uh, Nokos closes the door behind everybody and uh, <clears throat> sort of takes a seat in the corner and he gets out a notepad. It looks like he's kind of just writing everything down. Uh, of what's about to happen. And uh, Impa sort of hushes the room and goes, thank you everyone for coming. Um, as most of you know, we're here to uh, change the music. <laughs> yes, change yes the music. and that is why we are here to help facilitate the change of the music. As most of you know, <laughs> as most of you know, we are here to discuss uh, what seems to be a very disturbing trend recently. But first, let's make sure that uh, uh, all these introductions are made. Um, Atticus, it's nice to see you again, if you wouldn't mind. Ma'am. Uh, what what does she want me to do? Introduce yourself. <laughs> oh. uh, so is this like a big, you said it's a big group, like chamber full of- Yeah, so, so the, the four of you and uh, Suket is there as well. You see uh, Impa, as well as uh, and Nokos in the corner. You see maybe like five other dudes and uh, a Goron with a, like what looks like they passed for martial clothes. It looks like there's another martial in here. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's a pretty crowded room. Okay. Uh, I guess I kind of walk up to a spot where I can speak from and just kind of turn to the, the group and say, well, thank you all for coming out here. Uh, if you haven't heard, um, my name is Atticus. I'm a marshal out on the eastern side of 
Talentown and through Lon Lon and the surrounding areas. And what? You're going to say something, Elias? No, I'm Impa right now. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you all. Uh, <clears throat> we have had a couple, uh, quite a few uh, reports of monsters uh, attacking uh, hunting parties, attacking settlers, attacking uh, anybody. And personally, myself, have lost a, a good dear community friend, young man who was killed by a monster. Uh, I have not seen anything with my own eyes, um, but we definitely need to get this under control. So any information that any of you have would be very helpful, and maybe we can start to resolve this issue. Uh, Impasor gives you a nod, turns to Suket, and goes, Suket, you say that you can corroborate this in some way? She stands up. We had some monster sightings about a month ago, but uh, they died down eventually. Um, it got a little hairy, but we haven't had any recent activity in at least a couple of weeks. Okay. Impa looks uh, at the Goron. You know, as us over in Elden province, uh, what are you guys looking at? And he he just sort of looks around and goes, yeah, same story. Impa turns to uh, Pierre and Zolta. He goes, now if I'm to understand, you're not a marshal, but you've also encountered some monster attacks. Is that right? Yes, we have. Um, we were in a forest recently and um, a friend of ours sat. Yeah, this isn't the right way to go about it. We are meant to introduce ourselves to oh. the council. Oh, oh, it's fine. Introductions can wait. You were saying. No, introductions are important. Oh. Hello, council. My name is Zolta Kalio, child of Mantan Kalio and Luda Kalio, Shit. sister of Zane and Zerna. <laughs> I am the youngest of a long line. <laughs> Zolta, Zolta. And, and with the slightest pause, Kestrel just mutters under her breath, but audibly, and extremely long-winded. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. Uh, and then uh, one of the one of the gentlemen who uh, who's just sort of probably the most interested person. And he goes, "It seems like our fears may be confirmed. I think these wave of monsters might be closing in on Hyrule City." This uh, other guy. Another, another shorter guy he goes, well, whispers from recent immigrants into the city seem to, it seems like they might confirm this trend, but there's still, there's still a lot we don't know. Older guy, shorter in stature, not as uh, short as, as the other guys. Uh, he goes, it's possible, according to the physical descriptions we've received from all of you, that it could indicate that these monsters are what are known as moblins, which, as we all are aware, are servants of the evil king. Soza, who uh, you met in the hallway, just like, okay, calm down. Ganondorf was sealed away hundreds of years ago. I think that everybody here is overreacting, and some, some light bickering ensues. I don't know about that taller guy um, kind of half stands up and tries to get everybody on track. He goes, remember everyone, the purpose of this council is to help this city, including protecting it from possible attacks. Impa speaks up again. He goes, and the city's border is the first line of defense to the castle and to the royal family itself. I don't mean to interject, but I would go as far as to say that the first line of defense is far, far from the city's border, far outside. Out in the fields where all the settlers are, these people are willing to stand up and fight for the royal family, if necessary. Kestrel, make a uh, perception check.
Uh, while, while, uh, Atticus is kind of making his case to Impa, you just hear, you not hear anything. You just sort of feel this, this slight kind of rumble. You know how whenever these the minor earthquakes happen out here, um, it's, it's kind of like that where it's just a brief little, like it could have been someone dropping a heavy object or it could have been, you know, you just feel a little rumble. Uh, the guy who was trying to keep the peace in the corner turns to the guy who's probably most riled up. He goes, Nank, what can be done to increase the wall defenses and patrols? And Nank, apparently, this is his name, as well. We can allocate more guards from the street patrol to the wall and, and double patrols. And he starts to go on in this elaborate plan. Pierre, make a perception roll. Twenty. Twenty. You feel uh, a vibration. You're not. It doesn't. It's a very, very deep vibration that you haven't, that you can't really place. And as soon as you realize this, Ampa kind of perks up from the current ongoing planning. She goes, "I." I did anyone just feel rumble? Yeah. Uh, Impa kind of looks out the, the little window that's there and uh, goes, walks up to the window. And. Oh, shit. A third <laughs> rumble occurs, which everybody feels. It's uh. big and loud. And as it happens, horns go off. War horns, emergency horns. Horns that people in this giant city are not used to hearing. Impa walks up to the window and just, oh no. And she darts for the door. Um, <laughs> many, many of the council members sort of look, glance out the window, get a look of shock, and then uh, rush out the door with her. Uh, Kestrel, you're following Impa? What's uh, everybody yeah. else do? Because Impa. <laughs> I am following uh, Kestrel. I what? follow along, but I'm not concerned at all because this is all just a hallucination. Come on, Zolta, you're going to die if you stay here. What is Atticus? Okay, gonna die. How close am I to the window? You're about five feet. I want to go look through the window. You see... The vantage point isn't that high from here, but you can see a couple of billowing smoke plumes from right outside the wall, and a lot of people running back and forth in the streets. Make a perception roll. All right. 15. Towards the border of the city, which is a little hard to see, but you can see um, some aspects of it where you were just about an hour or so ago, you just see a wave of color descending inward into the city. And that's pretty much all you can make out. Uh-oh. A wave of color? Yeah. Is this something I recognize or have seen before? <sighs> nope. Okay, I turn and follow the rest of the group. Now. So as everyone starts spilling out, the, and it's the entire chamber that's just flooding out, um, there's this fairly large group of guards that sort of rush past towards the entrance of the castle where you guys were, and Nank is just sort of standing there. He goes, it's too late. We're too late. And he starts to, to communicate with some of the guards. Impa is kind of looking around, assessing the situation, gives a, a brief glance at, at the two Zora, who she know, doesn't probably knows the least and in a moment's notice just like sizes you up and instantly know like what you're capable of, what your deal is. She goes, all right, as us, Suket, rally the guards, back up the castle defenses at the entrance. And Suket uh, kind of gets over the moment. It turns to uh, the Goron, apparently, as us, and uh, they just sort of look at each other and they just sort of sort of jog their way towards the entrance, also communicating with some guards. Impa turns to everyone else. 
<clears throat> says, protection of the royal family is paramount right now. Nunk, you and all the rest of the council, go to the throne room, secure the king, take him to the pedestal room. It is the safest place in the castle. Go. And all the, the sort of group of older guys that were just in the council, they, they look at each other and they just beeline down deeper into the castle. Impa turns uh, to the four of you guys. He goes, what is also paramount is that we protect the other members of the family. I'm going to ask you, Marshall, you, Carol, and you two, you look able-bodied. I need yes. you to secure the princess. Carol can show you the way. It's right up that tower. I will go secure the queen. And she darts off. Right away, ma'am. And I immediately make a beeline for... Um, can we ascertain that this accordion still has, like, knife things? You... Because that's the only thing that makes Pierre useful in general. You gather <laughs> with the construction of the skeleton-like <laughs> configuration that it's probably possible. God, I hope so. All right. Good enough. Um, so, even though this is a different... I can't remember. I know this is, like, a different whatever but i believe in my timeline i can't remember forever ago before the great calamity and all that this what like protecting the royal family was still what she could did basically if i recall in our canon yeah there, okay. there you wouldn't have to read much to know that that yeah i just wanted to make sure that i'm like am i protecting I the royal family of I Hyrule was kind of the I'm chicest like, thing for okay. a very long time cool so that would be that was something happening in my timeline that Kess would know. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm putting this all together. I hope so, Jody. <laughs> well, well, we're saying late. yes. We're doing it live. Um, Screw it. Okay, so uh, Atticus has run towards the direction um, that Impo was pointing. All right, I'm going to take a brief moment because and turn around and go like, Sulta, for heaven's sakes, if this was a hallucination, you wouldn't be dreaming about my people's freaking history and you wouldn't be in your this weird... I don't know what's going on. I don't know why your face is weird. I don't know. Your who face is this? weird. Everyone's face you looked is in weird. the mirror. You don't even know who I am right now, Zolta. I don't care. Have you looked in a mirror? Zolta, this is Kess. You got your light hair and red eyes. Atticus look is... over, Look over at the other Zora and go, how do you know who I am? Because Atticus is out of sight, and you're only 90% sure the direction he went. Uh, okay. wait, okay. Kess? And I poke her face. Ah! <laughs> of course it's me. You don't look like Kess. You don't look like How yourself. How do I your Kess? Okay, well that explains a few things, but fair. Because <clears throat> if my calculations are correct, we are in a timeline that... Long, long time ago! Okay, <laughs> calculations, Impa. you're Kess. Impa young and weirdly attractive. I gotta work through that later. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's Pierre, by the way. We're not married. I... She doesn't know that. Okay. <laughs> it's a long story. We'll tell you when we wake up. Anyway, let's I know I we try won't. to figure out. Okay. We will um, talk about it. We got a princess to protect. Yeah, we should go do Holy that. Crap. Holy crap, this is... Oh, guys. Carol, this roll... Is cool. Or Kestrel, excuse me. Roll a... Uh, roll a learning check. Carol would like to speak to your manager. <laughs> Don't even go there. I work in retail, Kieran. You are uh, pretty sure the direction Atticus started off. And okay. Well, let's go live some history, guys. <laughs> and then just go run off. Starting to nerd out. Oh, Zora's. God. Oh, God, I'm gonna, all right. Wait for us, Kieran. Person. <laughs> I love that you went from Kiri to Carol, Kess person. <laughs> you know what? That's how we go. I'm too many Kia. Ooh, okay. a rupee incentive has been sent in. Oh, um. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Atticus, you're you're the first one up the tower. You get to the top, and you're not sure where to go from there. Um, make a logic check. 
Uh, question. Yeah. Um, my well-rounded feet is that always active, or do I have to like? I believe it's always active. And it gives me what advantage, right? I think it lets you roll as if you had two in that score. Oh, I okay. Can't double check. Yeah, that'd be great. I can't remember. I think you're right, though. So in that case, 20. 20. Um, castles aren't too much of your thing, but you can sort of tell where what hallway might lead to a prominent room right as the rest of your group comes up behind you. Uh, I think the princess is probably this way. We should definitely head over there and make sure she's secure. <clears throat> Sure. In our group hallucination, we'll go save oh the God. princess. I don't know what. Will you why shut you keep up right now? Do you, Carol? Do you know them? You know um, what? Never mind. Forget it. And it's I a long story. <laughs> head to the door. You guys follow? Yes. Same. So you guys go down this I hallway. Know that one. And that one's more of a workplace associate, proximity <laughs> associate. Pointing to who? Me? Or Zolta? No, I know I know Pierre, and then like, this one's more of a workplace proximity associate. Yes. So you guys get- Okay, okay, but hold on. You're Kess. <laughs> You're Pierre. Yes. Who are you? Not it's to Atticus. Right. Atticus I, is, I have, is taken off towards yeah. the <laughs> You just asked I followed him. Who are you? I said, I said, never mind, you know. Tell us so, up. As you, as you follow him uh, down the hallway, um, you eventually reach a larger than normal door. Guys, with... I just feel like the music just stopped. I do. <laughs> Sense of urgency hey, is calm. There, so. There's music playing in your head, Kess. How long Every has day. that been going on? As Every long day. as you've been annoying us, Zolta. Oh, okay. And uh, I move. And on. as you as you come I to this, who I think is just a hallucination, but at least more sane than Kess right now. As as you I'm sort of. I'm trying to remember like how my attitude was towards you on that day, and it was not you very kind. No, so we like... were very salty to each other at that point in time. <laughs> so as as you approach the door and realize, wow, I feel like the atmosphere has changed. You understand why. Um, because uh, in front of the door are two slumped-over guards. Um, I kneel down to check, like, vitals on one of them, I guess. Roll... Roll a learning check. Learning. Uh, 16. You... Are you trying to feel for a pulse? Yeah. You do not feel one. And as you take your finger back, there's a little bit of blood. I oh. turn to the group and kind of do like a, like, hold up, you know. And I look over at the other guard, and I guess I assume he's dead, too. He is slumped over in a similar fashion and does not seem to be moving. But are the doors closed? The door is cracked open. Okay, I want to um, try to listen at first and then peek through. Can you point out the blood? Can I see the blood? Uh, is that something you do, Atticus? Yeah, I mean, if it's on my fingers, I kind of... It's about, about a, like a, a fingertip's worth. I would like to feel into the room and see if there is life uh, still in there, if I can, how many uh, forms of life. You, uh... Okay, roll your roll. <laughs> <laughs> Entropy, I think. Yes. Death magic. <laughs> death magic to detect life. Nineteen. Well, it's technically life and death, and all that. Um, yeah. So you reach into the room, and the room, your range is what sixty feet. That sounds about right. I think I think I remember I, that. I'd have to check. Um, yeah. you reach into the room, and you can get to pretty much all the corners you think. And you you sense a single um, a single life form. Can you can you detect anything aside from just life with that? Um, well, because it's 
based on life force and I can drain life from other people, I think I'd be able to tell if a life force is draining or getting stronger. It seems stagnant, just just a just the life. Okay. Not not getting healthier, not getting weaker. Okay. Uh, I do this towards Atticus. <laughs> A- am I? Can I? Can I see this? Am I facing that? I'm way? trying to get his attention. You did you say you were? Who, someone said they were trying to peek in the door. I was. Okay. Uh, Atticus, you can see whatever Zolt is trying to do. Okay. Um, Kestrel, Yarr. you peek in the door and without opening it further or just what you can yeah, see? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to gauge because I she hasn't told us who yeah. or what is in there, so I don't want to just go bolting in. If Without moving the door, you can see maybe 15% of the room and you don't see anyone. And I don't hear anything? Make a perception check. What do your Sheikah eyes, ears hear? What? Eyes can't. What do your Sheikah eyes hear? 36! I hear everything. A fly on the wall lands and I am aware of it. So if you're here, here, welcome to Exploding Dice. Zolta doing this in the background. Yeah, so so despite the distractions, you're able to tune it out and hear into the room super, super faintly. You just hear like a... And even with that, you can't really tell the exact words, but just a slight whisper or a mutter. And the tone seems a little nervous. That's it. Uh, I have a question, DM. Yes, player. Uh, open legends is not a thing I'm super familiar with. When I want to like, be like, I want to do this thing, but it's one of my flaws. <laughs> Let me know you you're doing it because of a flaw. Yeah, so I'm about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, but what's the flaw? So my flaw is uh, vengeful. Oh, joyful. Yeah. Okay. So I see these these dead guards. Okay. And I'm really pissed off. And so I just like pull out my whip and bust the door open. Your uh, whip? As, Hell yeah, my I, oh whip. Oh my god, as that happens, I want to um, kind of conserve my powers over life and death and game speak, activate my life drain, uh, boon or whatever, um, just in preparation to maybe steal the life energy of whatever happens to be evil and trying to attack me. Okay. Um... All right, so uh, Pierre, where are you doing all this? Um, I'm going to see that they're prepping stuff and try to see if I can do something with this accordion to maybe, hopefully they're knives in here. Okay. Bone knives. So, um, y- yeah, there you can pull out two bones that are somewhat similar to the knives you're used to wielding. Hey, shing. It doesn't make that noise, they're bones. <laughs> I just, I, like, I, please I, make that noise. <laughs> they're, they're, they're musical bones. <laughs> um, wow. All right, so Atticus busts the door open. <clears throat> and you guys are all sort of close enough huddled around this door that it swings wide open. All of you can see wide into this room. And you can see pretty much the whole room. Uh, you look over to the bed. You look over to some of the seating. You don't see anything. Um, there is a window um that and you guys have climbed up the tower so you're a little h- higher up now and you do see a window and just sort of this this kind of tallish um figure that's just standing looking out the window it does not seem to be reacting to the door being blown open just looking out the window what does this figure look like it's hard to tell they've got their back turned um they do seem to have some, some kind of black cloak on, so you can't make out many features. Are without they getting... tall as crap? They're uh, maybe about six, six something, six one, six two. Are they so, yeah, they're tall as crap Definitely uh, compared not to Zelda. you? Hey, are they? Rude. Are there? Rude. <laughs> rude. Are there any particular symbols that are on this cloak, or is it like Nothing. solid black, like Organization Thirteen cloak? Made me say rude, and it summoned Tilly. It is just black. Okay. 
And uh, Kestrel. Yes, sorry. With okay. your high perception roll earlier. Yes. You can kind of tune into more of the, the muttering. And it, it's definitely coming from this figure who's just looking out the window, just muttering, it won't be enough. It won't be enough. What won't be enough? And uh, there's a pause after a while. And then he sort of writes, they sort of write themselves. And uh, now they speak in a voice that everyone can hear. If you've come to save the princess from the unfortunate fate of the rest of the city, then I'm sorry to say that you're too late, much as I am too late to murder her as I did her mother. And he turns around to face you. How far is this guy? Uh, so maybe uh, 50 feet away. 50 feet. You guys are at the entrance and he's at the opposite end of the room. He turns to face you and uh, you can see through the hood, not much feature wise, but uh, just pale skin, jet black hair. He just turns. Oh God, he's from an anime. Sizes you guys up for a second. He goes, I'm sure that this little group of yours here could pack a punch, but I'm afraid I'm on a bit of a timetable. And he turns back out the window and looks at you guys. He goes, enjoy the view. And just swan dives backwards outside the window. Okay. Wow. Uh, um, I'm going to run to the window and see yeah. if I can follow him with my hook shot. Uh, I would like to run to the window and see if I can create some kind of a barrier um, to him <clears throat> falling. So the three of you run up to the window. Kestrel, uh, that's the wrong music. Kestrel gets up there first. <laughs> Metroid. Nope. And, uh, <laughs> um, he looks like Kestrel, a giant brain. We Kestrel, don't... make a perception roll. Ah, ah, stop it. Where did I keep losing perception? There it is. 13. Boo. 13. Um, so you are specifically looking for the man, is that correct? No, I'm looking for um, a weight, like he swan dived down, so I'm more looking for like, is there something I can hook shot to to get down to the ground? To um, follow him. Okay. You, you look straight down pretty much, looking for a, a spot. And there's, you're, you're, you're pretty high up. There's a few wooden posts, but um, that you see way down towards the bottom. But this this stone tower, which is kind of halfway over the water as well, um, it's it's you know it to be out of the range of your hookshot. Beyond that, you got to the window pretty quickly, and you don't see the man anywhere. But he had, he had said he was too late to kill her. Is that? Um, Atticus and Zolta, you guys also ran up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you guys were looking for, uh, the man? Yeah. I was basically just trying to create a barrier. Okay. Just not um, small, but... Yeah, so Atticus, you look down, you don't, you don't see the, the man anymore. Uh, Zolta, you look, and right when you're about to, like, start figuring out the area, you realize this, there's nothing to contain. I want to start looking around the room for any kind of. Food. I was gonna do that too. You guys, looking around the room. Yeah, I'm going to contemplate in. the window and um, question whether or not it would be a good idea to jump out and see if I could fly. I'm <laughs> not doing it. I'm contemplating. All right. Um... Roll for might. Uh... No, don't. <laughs> Roll for protection, whatever that is. No, uh, I'm not doing it. All right, uh, Zolta, perception check. And who said they were investigating the room first? Atticus, right? Yeah, Atticus and me. Atticus, roll a perception check with advantage one. 
because uh, Pierre's helping you. Uh, Any perception for me? Any perception from you, Zolta? 16. D8. Can't see things around a cart, but I can see out this window. Okay. 24. 24. Um, Atticus, you look around the room and there, nothing really looks disturbed. I'm outside the, the obviously dead guards at the entrance and the cracked door. The room looks really, really untouched, except from the slight disturbances from you guys coming in. Zolta, um, you start just making a general look around to sort of gauge the surroundings. And this is, like I said, a much higher vantage point. So you can see a lot more of the city. And the time it took you guys to get up here, um, you can pretty plainly see that the uh, the city is is it does not look good. Um, there, you, what what might have been described once as a wave of color, you now can see are just hundreds and hundreds of monstrous looking things just tearing through the city, slaughtering anyone they can see. I don't think you're going to have a chance to perform with that band now, Pierre. There are holes in the wall. The streets have just as much gray as they have red. Um, there's people and livestock running around on fire. It's it's uh, not good. Go ahead and roll a learning check. I am so smart. I rolled a seven. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's 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 not not a good sight. Huh. Um, anyone who else who happens around the window, you see the same the same carnage. Uh, am I still um, doing an investigation check or a, a perception check? No, you. Uh, we don't want to roll like the same check for the same thing. So he had advantage one because you were helping him. Ah. <clears throat> you 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 see the same thing together. Okay. Um, after a moment of sort of taking that in, you hear steps come up. And uh, it's Impa, who's who's just suddenly standing at the door, and she is she's almost out of breath, which is kind of shocking to see in the shape that she's in. She is frantically looking for Zelda. Have you? Where's Where's the princess? What? What? Where? She wasn't here. There was someone in a cloak who said we were too late, but he was too late. It. it... He flew out the window. It's not helpful. I'm still looking out the window when I say that. Uh -huh. Okay. And she, she's just uh, out of breath and like, well, it's not good or bad. Uh, we should check on the king. Everybody, come. And she tries to usher you guys towards uh, back down the tower. Follow <laughs> without question, because that's just my habit. Uh, I will follow as well. For Impa, not for everyone. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to question for... all y'all. Thank you for clarifying that, Kiri. You know, I just gotta, you know, there might be new people watching and they're like, oh, wait, she follows with that question? No, just this lady. Welcome to the one shot. So uh, I'm assuming all you guys eventually follow her? Yep. Yeah. So she, she escorts you through a series of what you are pretty sure are not very well known hallways and passageways into a very secure, uh, very secure looking room. As soon as you guys get in, you see the council uh, that you had seen in the meeting room before standing around a figure who is very obviously dressed as a king. As soon as you guys get in, that figure, that kingly figure turns to Impa immediately. Where are they? Where are my wife and daughter? I stand up a little bit straighter since I'm actually in the presence of someone who matters. Impa um, approaches the king and sort of starts whispering into her ear. And the more she whispers, you see a single tear come down his cheek. She whispers some more, and you see her, you didn't notice, uh, she was clutching something in her hand. She sort of passes it off to the king and uh, whispers again. He goes, well, if she wasn't there, then where... She hardly leaves the castle. 
and one of the council members very meekly steps forward and goes, with all due respect, your majesty, the princess has been known to sneak out of the castle on occasion, but not without my knowing. I may know a few places where she could be hiding. Then go! Take Impa with you. She knows a way into the city that the moblins shouldn't have found yet. And Impa. And now the king whispers into her ear. And the object he was holding, he cut, clasps in both hands and there's a bright radiating light that comes out that just expands and then suddenly stops. And what seemingly is now two objects, he takes one and gives it back to Impa. Impa nods and goes, of course, Zok, come. Passages this way. And they run off. Um, the if, king, sorry. I was going to say if Pierre and, and, or, and Zolta are, are near me, I kind of want to mutter just like quietly to them of, oh gods, I think we're actually at the calamity. Yep. The king, while you're sort of whispering this, is trying to sort of compose himself, as kings do. And he, he finally sort of notices you guys, and he turns to the guy who seems to be the leader of the council, de facto. He's like, and who might they be? Uh, these are the ones that came to alert us about the impending attacks, albeit a little too late. Uh, they also discovered where that Zelda might still be alive. I see. And he sort of steps towards you guys. I am Daphne Snohansen Hyrule, King of Hyrule. And you are, and he, he just sort of goes down the line, gets some brief introductions. When he goes to Zolta, it's, I am Zolta Kalio, daughter of Matan and Luda Kalio, boom. sister to <laughs> just boom, into the rib cage. <laughs> Not a <clears throat> time. He's a Literally. king. That's how you do introductions to a king. Literally, the world is exploding. <laughs> there are not, rules and regulations that you follow. in front of He her. has moved on from the two of you and has introduced himself to Atticus. He's like, a marshal from Talontown? That's right, Majesty. And at the time, like, give, like, a bow and, and then say, I'll do whatever I can to, to find your daughter. And I thank you. You know, I spent some time in Talon Town as a boy. Nothing but good memories from that place. Never would I have imagined then what is happening now. And he, he sort of turns away and looks, and he kind of didn't notice it with all the chaos that was happening, but he turns to a glaring sword in the middle of this pedestal room. He says, Legends tell us that in times like these, the hero of time will emerge to claim this blade and seal away Ganon with it. But no hero of anything has come to our aid this day. Sort of collects his thoughts. This invasion is my fault. For some time I have since Ganon's return swelling. I attempted to use the magic that runs through my own veins, gifted by the goddess herself, to stop his arrival, but I, I couldn't stop. Yet still, I told no one, waiting for the hero to arrive and claim the master sword for himself. And so I did nothing, and now my people are slaughtered by my own inaction. We can only pray that the gods themselves sweep away Ganon's malice with a tempest of their own, but without all of you, without Zelda getting to safety, then such a storm would only fulfill Ganon's wishes to destroy Hyrule forever. I've instructed Impa to take Zelda, should they find her, straight to the castle's back. We must go there. There's just a hidden cove. You should all flee when they arrive. As for my fate, my fate is tied to the kingdoms. And uh, at this moment, Suket comes in, seen better days. Um, it's just like, sir, they're, they're entering the castle. He goes, go with them. I'll pray. 
Gusso, who's just sort of like kind of in shock from this whole little little speech that he's never heard the king talk this way. You can tell by his face. The council starts meandering their way towards the way he was pointing. Is may the gods answer your prayers, my king. And Gusso gathers all the council, and uh, they start heading to this passage that's tucked away behind the altar. You guys following? Yes. Um, yep. Yes, and I'm looking at my hand where my um, mark of the goddess is. Y'all learn a lot about Zolta today. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, as Pierre remembers a lot of this for reasons that we'll not get into today, um, uh, I it, it feels a little bit of a, like a weird bad memory but he's trying to like keep it in as best as he can and just feels odd but follows everybody else so you guys are led to this sort of secret cove and there's this it's a pretty sizable boat it could it could fit everyone who's there plus some probably almost double the capacity of, of the people there it seems to be especially prepared and maintained for emergencies like this <clears throat> Um, some of the council members know their way and, and they start preparing the boat. One by one, uh, they, they, they start to, to board the boat and go, so he turns to, to the, the older gentleman, um, he goes, so where is it that we should go? Like, well, the closest mountain range would be, and he's interrupted. <clears throat> You know, I wasn't lying when I said I didn't have the time to deal with you, but if you're going to keep sneaking the princess away from me, then I'll just have to remove you all from the equation, one way uh -oh. or the other. And you hear this voice, you don't know where it comes from, and you turn around, and it's the same man, standing as if nothing had happened. <clears throat> he finishes speaking and he's he's got this sort of like this grin like he's in control and the grins sort of fades and he turns to awe as he looks sort of over you guys and past you guys um he's he starts he starts smiling almost a giggle um very uncharacteristic he goes <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's working they're starting to form. <laughs> and some of the councilmen turn around to, to look. They go, see what? I don't, what is he, what's he blabbering on about? I don't see anything. Sukat turns and goes, what are they? Are you guys looking at all or are you just keeping an eye on the guy or what? Looking. I am also going to look. All right. Um, Atticus, make a perception check. Pierre, you don't have to, because when you turn around, you see a recently familiar sight of fabric-y looking circle dealer objects that shimmer. Mm. Atticus, would you roll? Uh, so I rolled a natural 20. Do I re-roll that? Re-roll it. And still add my other one? Yeah. So what's the second one? 35. Okay. Total. Yeah, you you see a similar phenomenon, but you have no idea what you're seeing. Wait, so it's a sparkly thing? Crap. Yep. It's a it's a something that you just saw in Hyrule Field this morning. <clears throat> oh crap. And the man sort of stops laughing for a second. He goes, Well, that settles it then. Princess Zelda's death by my hands will complete this wound. And in order for her to die, you can't be here to greet. And before he, st he, uh, he can finish talking, there is an explosion, a very, very, very close explosion. 
and he the the shockwave sort of knocks him back and he turns around you see the goron uh uh marshal that's just sort of like tossing a bomb sort of grinning you see impa with uh the councilman that she ran off with and you see uh, a hooded woman who takes you guys a minute but you eventually all come to recognize as the woman you encountered earlier in town. And it would seem that this is Princess Zelda. Oh. I'm getting weirdly like nostalgic and just emotional about this. <laughs> Yay. And he goes, oh, how kind of you to bring her to me. And you see Zelda hold up this mostly triangular, but s sort of cut in half almost object but she holds it up and there's this just bright radiating light that's just radiates radiates and the man is very off put and does not know how to react and he's like no wait no you <laughs> you you have to die and suddenly one of those shimmering holes that you're starting to see form just forms right below him and he just falls into it. Great. And <laughs> all of you are just sort of taken aback by all of this. And not knowing what to do, Impa's like, we have to get to this boat now. And you, you look back at the castle and you see this beam of yellow light just shoot up with a crackling noise. And you see the roof of the castle is, has a bluish tent. It starts to turn gray from the center and slowly starts to expand outwards. And uh, Impa's like, we all have to go now. Um, everyone starts making a beeline for the, the councilmen have already started pushing it out. And uh, I need agility checks from Kestrel, Pierre, Zolta, Atticus, all of you guys. Uh, Elias, you're keeping track of time, right? Yep. Good. Well, my agility is my logic, so 21. Nin no, 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 19. 12. 24. Was 24 the highest? I think it yes. was. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm last. You were, okay. For brevity's sake here, who was what's what was the lowest to highest? 12, 19, 21, 24. Yes. Uh, characters. Zolta, Pierre, okay. Kira, or Kess, Kestrel, and Atticus. Atticus. So um you guys noticed that when the man sort of fell through, these these and the 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 light from Zelda radiated, these portals started not appearing and started disappearing. Um and they're all over the place, so you have to watch your step. Zolta, as you're running towards the boat, a hand reaches out from the portal and just grabs you and pulls you straight in. I would like to uh, start death draining and gra stealing the life force of whatever's grabbing me. Uh, roll for it. And that's that thing. So I get this bonus to that. The same thing happens to the four of you, the, the rest of the three of you. 22. Uh, you can get a reaction can to I... it, like Zolta, if you wish. Uh, what was the roll? 22. OK, so um, wow. you, you definitely feel the life force drain from him. And like it, it, it works. You, you dealt a, a chunk of damage with that you are still pulled in completely. <clears throat> um, is anyone else doing anything? Yeah. Um, can I kind of try to cut the arm? Yeah. So Wait. I didn't beat the toughness by 10 or more? You did not. <laughs> um, Pierre's trying to cut it. Atticus? Same. Pull out the okay. pull out my knife and try to slice at it. Kestrel? Anything to hook shot onto? It's a lot of rock. So 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. For the, for the purposes of brevity here, because we're running out of time, I will say that n no. And as you're trying to figure that out, you are pulled in. Okay. Um, Pierre, you're you're sort of the 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 last one of of those three who's looking around. And as you try and reach down, you you make a slash, and it cuts him and it hurts him, not as much as you hoped. Yeah. But by the time you you get any sort of relief, you get pulled in as well. Ah! Um, Seconded. Ah! <laughs> ah! Zolta, Zolta and Kestrel, you guys both land in an ocean. And uh, as you try this to works scream, for me. as you say that, Zolta, you realize the words are not coming out. And the more you try to speak, you can't. And the swimming motion that you're doing, you realize it's not yours. And it's kind of an out-of-body experience. And you you just hear words come out of your mouth that are not yours. Param, Param, where are you? Where, what, what? Kestrel, same experience for you. You're not calling out for anyone specifically. He's like, what, what happened, where? Pierre, you land in the middle of a field. Ah. All alone, same out-of-body experience. Zalu! What? What? Where? Zalu! And as these cries echo more and more, your out of body experience fades and fades, and you hear less, and it gets black. The three of you eventually wake up in the Kakariko Inn with little to no memory of what you dreamed about. You think you dreamed about maybe some of the stuff that happened in this crazy day you just had, but aside from that, you can't remember anything. Although, for some reason, the name Atticus wasn't there before, but is now. And that's where we have to end to this morning's episode. Uh, I would like to say that Zolta, although she may not know why, is maybe just a touch more ornery at that waiter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Very well, sad, but I don't just, know just, why. Just tell me my horse is okay. Yes, please. I'll Our let text. you know after the show. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody <laughs> who watched the show. Um, can we Remember have a round two? of applause to Elias? Yeah, yeah! You, Elias. Freaking rock you did it, so man. good. Woo! Maybe next time I do this, I'll get combat for you guys. Yay! Um, I gotta drain the life out of things. <laughs> hey, we had some good character moment. That's all we need. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Um, remember to follow us on Twitch. Uh, we do this show every other Saturday. We do lots of other programming here. Um, everything from casual streams to, to stuff that's kind of like this, that's more creative. Uh, give us a follow if you haven't. Um, tune in for the uh, next thing on our schedule, which is tonight at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 which is the Cody Zone. Yep. Um, with Cody Davies, he's a, a very entertaining guy. I think he's still playing Pokemon Silver, so if Pokemon interests you, be sure to tune in to that tonight. A, uh, of a phrase, but sure. <laughs> He's entertaining in his own way. Yeah. Social media plugs. Zelda Universe is on Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, and Tumblr at Zelda Universe. We're Zelda Universe TV on Twitch, of course, YouTube, and Instagram. Our Discord server is discord.gg slash Zelda, and our website, of course, is zeldauniverse.net. Um, I can be found at Elias Thompson everywhere. Where can people go to follow all of you guys online? Elliot, you start. Okay, uh, you can find me as Green Eye Trombonus most places, Green Eye T Bone on uh, Twitter, and something Elias didn't mention that I know he's looking forward to is our nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Gary, uh, what what do you have to plug? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that last bit? Musical. I said, what do you have to plug? <laughs> oh, look, we're out of time. You hurry and have to plug. <laughs> oh, I think we have time Your to plug. Your face is so red. <laughs> 
Um, my name is Carrie Callaghan. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook. Twitter? And I have a website and what? You just said Twitter? No, I said Twitter. Leave Twitter. me alone. I'm like <laughs> shaking right now. It's Twitter for mind. sweater people. It is. <laughs> mm. Twitter. For cardigan. Swish. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm basically everywhere and then on YouTube as well. And I have my own Twitch channel, but I don't stream as much as I probably should. Same. Pass Alex. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Alex. I'm the media director here at Zelda Universe. Thanks for watching. Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Luca underscore Starks uh, on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and Twitch, even though I don't stream as much as I should. Uh, YouTube.com slash Luca Starks. I'm here at Zelda Universe on Monday streaming, and I'm always here. Uh, you can find all my artwork and dance stuff at alexrosenberg.net, and I will be at Paxi. So if you want to meet me, I don't know why you would, but you can at our panel, which we'll talk about <laughs> at some point. Jonathan. Uh, you can follow me at Saturnot pretty much everywhere. I also do a stream on Wednesdays with some random dude uh, where we drink wine and play Minecraft. It's me. I'm the random dude. Whoa. What? That was, what? That was like an insanely ridiculous <laughs> whisper. That is, that is his ASMR voice. <clears throat> also, Alex, uh, be cautioned. Uh, Elias will take over your panel and talk about Metroid. Oh, no, I'm I not know. going He's to PAX East. <laughs> He's not going to PAX East, though. It's going to be oh, Then me. you're safe. <laughs> it's going to be PAX me West and... is what you guys got to watch out for. Oh, and he, he already did it at a panel at PAX West, and it was great. Um, And I just want to give another very special thank you to Jonathan, who was our guest this evening and who is our official artist. Thank you for playing with us. Yay. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. I'm waking up this early for it. He's in the same time zone as a lot of us, which is kind of early. So, except me. Thank you to everybody who watched. We hope you will stick around and tune in for the next episode. We'll see all of you later. Bye-bye, bye bye, everybody. Bye. We're singing.